Hello, I'm Derek Grimmel, the author of the uh, Queen vs. Rook training database that you can download from the chessbase.com website. And I'm going to post up some more videos. Uh, the other ones have gotten a fair amount of attention, and I may as well put more up. So it's time to do the third rank defense. Uh, even though this one's covered in a lot of other sources, there are some sidelines we can take a look at. So let's walk into how a third rank defense evolves. Both kings are kind of far from the center. Black reunites the pieces, usually not a mistake, and follows the principle of always move the pieces toward the center. That's uh, when you can move toward the center, you're staving off checkmate. White also brings the king closest. Now this is another good principle that Black's following. When it's possible to form this rosette, whether you're playing attack or defense, forming this rosette is usually your best move, where all four pieces are a knight's move apart. And white follows another good principle in this ending. If the rook is undefended and you can attack it with your king, you should probably do so. And black follows a good principle, which is when you are able to attack the queen with your rook, you might as well do it. That controls the pace of the game. So we get a check, and the black king moves there, and we now have a third rank defense on the board. The defending king is trapped against the edge of the board by the queen. The rook is on the next file, or rank, and the white king is cut off from further approach. This is tricky to defeat. The first rule for the attacker is you want to position your queen so that the king only has one of the two central squares available. Now, the queen is controlling four squares on the F-line. These three are controlled directly, and this one is controlled by the fork threat from here. So, now, when that's the case, the defender has to put the rook on a color of square opposite to what the attacking king is standing on. The king is on e3, so black moves to a white square. And now we'll show how the white pieces together can't quite round up that rook. There's always one square left over that it can move to. If the queen gives up control of the other square, you can be safe in going to a square of the same color as the, defending, as the attacking king. But you have to watch out that you don't get uh, hoodwinked. Once the queen takes up this position, taking away a central square, you have to return to an opposite colored square. And again, the white pieces together cannot quite round up that rook. There's always one safe square to go to. Now again, it's safe to go to a square of the same color as the attacking king because the queen has given up control of this square. Oop, now we want to go to a square of the opposite color. Fortunately, we have one right there. So the attacker just can't quite round up that rook. When you're the attacker in the third rank defense, this is what you need to remember. The rook goes to a square of the opposite color from the king. The queen is controlling one of the two central squares. The king takes up opposition, and that forces the rook here. So the king and the rook are on a diagonal two squares apart. This is the key position. The killing move is there, crossing the T. If the diagonal between the king and the rook is the crossbar of a T, the queen completes the T on the diagonal. We'll look at why this is the move to play uh, in a bit. Um, the best move for the defender, or the one that's longest to mate, is to come forward into opposition. And then the attacker needs to remember a straightforward sequence. The queen was here, and it's going to make a square there, there, and there. So from here, the check there, the king comes toward the rook, usually a safe thing to do. 
check there and now the rook has to leave the third rank uh, or go lost and check here from here the king will, uh, if you're playing a computer, will always drop back here because it's one move farther to mate. And then the simplest procedure is to remember to set up a diagonal position by going there. The black rook is forced into a distant defense, and regardless of where it goes, unless it walks into a quick fork, complete the discovered check threat, and it will return, uh, it will return to this square to complete the diagonal position, which is in another video. If the defender decides to give check here, well, your queen is already controlling the checking square. So you can walk the king forward in safety, giving check from the diagonal next to the diagonal of the rook. And there's the fork. Let's look at a few other options along this path. White plays the killing move. If the rook scampers away on the other line, well, the queen already controls a checking square on a3. So the king can simply walk forward. We have a mate threat on the board at h6. The king has to try to move away. And bingo, there's a fork. Or, if he goes there, well, check there, and the next move will be a fork from g2. So if we go back here, black's main option... I don't know why chess base isn't obeying me today. Is to go there when the killing move is on the board, queen d6. But at this point, this is also where the defender can choose to adopt a harassment defense. There are two videos up on how to handle harassment defenses efficiently. From the killing position, let's take a look at a few other options for the defender. If he moves the rook, well, bing, bing, there goes the rook. Or if he goes to the other side, you get the very same kind of fork from above. If we go here, 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 and now try some alternatives, well, that's just plain no good because there's an immediate fork. That's no good because there's an immediate pin and loss of the piece. And the problem with that, attack a hanging rook, check, and we've got black cornered. Either way, we've broken the third rank defense. 